Hello, welcome to module one. Today we're going to talk about evidence-based sports nutrition. Uh, that is, where do we get the sports nutrition that we're going to talk about in this course? Uh, it comes from scientific research. First of all, I want to introduce you to the position statement of the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics, uh, the Dietitians of Canada, the American College of Sports Medicine, uh, and, and others. They state that performance of and recovery from sporting activities are enhanced by well-chosen nutritional strategies. In essence, choosing nutritional strategies wisely can help you perform at your best. Sports nutrition is essential for professional athletes. Athletes like LeBron James spend hundreds of thousands of dollars every year on optimizing their nutrition. College athletes too are, uh, need to optimize their nutrition to perform at their best. Uh, personal trainers, coaches, team coaches, parents, um, all need to understand nutrition to be able to best support their athletes in their athletic endeavors so they can perform uh, at a high level. And amateur athletes also should be looking into their sports nutrition uh, so they can perform really well. In fact, anybody that works out needs to understand uh, the nutritional requirements of their particular sport. So what is nutrition science? Uh, nutrition science is, first of all, supported by the scientific literature. Uh, it is typically adopted by professional athletes and coaches. Uh, best practices are adopted quickly by professional athletes and coaches because they work. Uh, and there should be a plausible biological theory as to why any nutritional uh, practice works. Beware of what you see on social media, things like promises for quick fixes or incredible results, uh, and particularly beware of an anecdotes. That's um, paid pieces of uh, advertising uh, that push a particular product without evidence. You'll see a lot of that uh, through social media. Uh, but recent social media is, is not the uh, first time that uh, nutritional science has been exaggerated. In fact, uh, there was a famous athletic diet uh, described from antiquity uh, about the wrestler Milo of Croton, a wrestler who won uh, wrestling in five successive Olympic Games from 532 to 516 BC. Um, according to uh, records, his diet included nine kilos of meat, uh, nine kilos of bread, uh, and 18 liters of wine a day. Um, if he had actually followed that dietary advice, Milo would have consumed approximately 57,000 kilocalories per day. Of course, he did not. Uh, this is just an anecdote, uh, and it is completely uh, uh, fake news. Beware of fads. Um, fads are, and particularly fad diets, someone is trying to sell you something. Um, here is an example that I've um, captured from uh, social media. Uh, here is a picture of a young person who says they lost uh, <laughs> they lost $350 in two weeks. It's more likely that you're going to lose a lot of money than it is that you're going to get the results that are talked about in these sorts of uh, fad diets. Here are some more uh, fake and fad uh, claims. You see this uh, fellow at the top here, before, mid, and after. Um, he is trying to convince you that he bulked up with uh, some product called Lean Bulk. Um, you can see by the um, fact that he's losing hair uh, with male pattern baldness and, uh, and gaining muscle at a ridiculous rate um, that this person is using uh, steroid hormones uh, and is juicing. Uh, so beware of those sorts of claims. Uh, people are trying to sell you products, um, but they're cheating. Be also aware that um, athletes often push products because they're paid. Uh, and, and sometimes you'll see things like the seven-day muscle mass meal plan pushed by an athlete. 
Um, and that's because the athlete is receiving money for that advertising. Uh, the, f- the fact is it's unlikely that that meal plan is going to do you any good uh, whatsoever, and it will cost you a great deal of money. Uh, the things we're going to talk about in this course are you know, practical uh, and cost-effective um, strategies to improve your nutrition uh, that don't involve these uh, fads uh, or uh, trying to take your money. Um, oftentimes, uh, I get this question, um, people say, well, but what about superfoods? I hear that there are superfoods. W- what are those and what should I be eating? Is, uh, is kale better than spinach or is uh, celery a superfood or um, so on? Um, what I would tell you is that, in fact, uh, fruits and vegetables are all superfoods. Uh, and the more fruits and vegetables you get in your diet, uh, the healthier that diet is going to be. Uh, and those fruits and vegetables are absolutely going to improve your performance. But don't spend money on superfoods. Um, spend money on, uh, on fruits and vegetables. And they don't need to be organic uh, to be uh, nutritional, nutritional and support your athletic endeavors. So what is sports nutrition? Sports nutrition uh, describes the role of nutrition in supporting training, performance, and health uh, in an athlete. It's important to understand that a healthy athlete is an athlete that's going to perform at their best in training. So our first goal is to provide nutrition that will create a healthy athlete. And then after that, we want to uh, layer on top uh, nutritional strategies that will improve performance. The science of sports nutrition uh, involves a number of scientific uh, areas. First of all, sociology, how people, uh, sports people choose the foods and oftentimes uh, people copy what other people are doing. Uh, athlete health is really important. Uh, we want to be aware of uh, nutrient excesses and avoid those and we want to be uh, very cautious with any nutrient deficiencies. Um, it is easy for athletes be- to become deficient in nutrients uh, because they're working so hard on a daily basis. Uh, Biology is really important, how the body processes nutrients, and that varies from person to person. Some people cannot um, uh, process nutrients as efficiently as others, and that's a personal journey. You need to listen to your body uh, as well as listen to uh, what I'm suggesting you try. Uh, Biochemistry, the biochemistry of nutrients is really important to understand uh, so you can fuel yourself with the best nutrients possible. Uh, physiology and how the body responds to nutrients is crucial. Again, you need to listen to your body and, uh, and, and follow exactly what it's telling you. Uh, there are genetic responses to different, um, different foods. For example, there are genetic responses to caffeine. Uh, caffeine responses differ from person to person. Some people are, perform excellently on caffeine, uh, but there are some people who just do not respond Uh, to caffeine. So you need to be cautious and listen again to your body and its responses. Uh, And lastly, sports medicine. Um, It's really important to make sure your nutrition is always adequate. Um, If it becomes inadequate, you can become unhealthy and sick uh, very rapidly. Now, there are many reliable sources of information. Here are a few of them. There are the scientific journals. Um, You can access most of these scientific journals using a search engine like Google Scholar or NCBI or PubMed. I recommend you do that regularly if you've got a topic that you're interested in, maybe a supplement that's new that you want to find out about. Um, You can look in textbooks. Uh, Our textbook, Sport Nutrition by Asuka Yukendrup, is an excellent source of reliable information. There are some academic organizations that are particularly reliable. Uh, The American College of Sports Medicine has a lot of good uh, nutrition advice, as does the Australian uh, Institute of Sport, AIS.gov. They have an excellent section uh, on nutrition for uh, athletes. 